Hello everyone, my name is Gillian Moreira and I'm talking to you from the University of Aveiro, Portugal. I'm very happy to be here today to present our work entitled Interculturalities in Higher Education, Contexts of Encounter, Learning and Exchange. This presentation has been made by myself and my colleagues, Susana Branch from the University of International Integration of the Afro-Brazilian Lusophony, Brazil, Celia Oliveira from the Federal University of Pará, Brazil, and Annabella Simões, like myself, from the University of Aveiro, Portugal. Our presentation will follow this structure. A brief introduction into the background of our study, presentation of our ongoing project, inter interculturality in higher education, and some final remarks. It's clear that higher education institutions have in many ways become global institutions, competing in a global market of students and knowledge. At the same time, they remain locally rooted, physically located in specific geographies, histories and social contexts, responding to national and regional needs and defined priorities. So we understand higher education institutions as both global and local spaces, influenced by internationalization and increasing flows of students and knowledge, and the expanding access to previously underrepresented populations, obliging institutions to address questions of social equity and intercultural inclusion. In this context, we ask, what intercultural opportunities and experiences, challenges and obstacles emerge? And how can diversities be understood and managed for the benefit of all? Consequently, intercultural competence and related concepts have become common in conversations around higher education, both as a learning goal for students, preparation for living and working in globalised social and professional contexts, and as a necessity for community building in diversified academic environments. We take intercultural competence to refer to, and I quote, the ability to behave appropriately in intercultural situations, the effective and cognitive capacity to establish and maintain intercultural relationships, and the ability to stabilize one's self-identity while mediating between cultures." End of quote. Relatedly, intercultural dialogue is a central concept, focusing on the dialogue between individuals and the conditions for that dialogue to be effective. Considering the Council of Europe's objectives for intercultural dialogue, namely, developing a deeper understanding of the diverse views and practices of the world, increasing cooperation and participation, the freedom to make choices, allowing personal growth and transformation and promoting tolerance and respect for others, and that the attainment of these objectives depends on the creation of conditions of mutuality, equity, openness and respect. We observe that these goals are often not compatible with the organisation and functioning of higher education institutions according to simplified and essentialized identity logics as are commonly found in institutional discourses. Nevertheless, such dialogue between individuals of different worldviews, languages and life stories may be a path to a desired interculturality. Interculturality is used in many ways and depends, tends to reject universal meanings but we highlight two ways of understanding this concept which seem relevant to the realities we're studying. On the one hand, as a strategy for the organization and integration of difference. On the other hand, as a creation and interpretation of meanings between participants who do not share the same linguistic and cultural understandings. And so to our project, entitled Interculturality in Higher Education, the voice of students. Our starting points for this project were our belief that institutions experience the expansion and diversification of their populations in particular ways, according to geographical, historical, social and institutional realities, and that observing the experiences of students in different institutions can contribute to more effective strategies for understanding and managing diverse populations. We hope to gain a better understanding of the different experiences of the diverse publics we invite into our institutions, in particular, how intercultural encounters and dialogue occur. 
both recognising the complexity of the challenges of interculturality and identifying ways of improving the intercultural experience of all. Three universities, each distinct in its own context, organisation, location and history, two in Brazil, one in Portugal, participate in this project. The Federal University of Pará, the University of Aveiro and the University for International Integration of Afro-Brazilian Lusophony. But it is essentially a collaboration between researchers with distinct identities and from different research fields, but sharing a common interest in issues of interculturality, inclusion and equity in the institutions they work in. In the context of this presentation, it's relevant to understand the distinct perspective of each institution. The focus of the Federal University of Pará here is on the inclusion of indigenous and quilombola students in line with Brazilian affirmative action policies. The perspective of the University of Aveiro is that of a European higher education institution with an increasing commitment to internationalization and the integration of a growing number of students from a widening range of nationalities. And Unilab, an institution which, as its name suggests, is built around the principle of international integration, is committed to the integration of students within the community of Portuguese language-speaking countries, in particular Portuguese-speaking African countries. In the first stage of our project, during 2022 and 2023, interviews were carried out with students in the three institutions, and in a second stage, in October 2023, we held a focus group session, bringing together students from all three institutions. The individual interviews revealed a range of specificities of the interculturality experienced in the three contexts, namely regarding the participants in the interactions between local and national populations, between international populations, the status of the students in the institution, as mobility students, international students, indigenous students, quilombolas, specificities of expectations and motivations, and varying understandings of interculturality, as a relationship between different languages and national identities, for example, or as an understanding of interculturality focusing on the interaction between people of distinct ethnic and social identities. Shared experiences also emerged the centrality of language in the intercultural experience as obstacle, gateway, factor of discrimination, difficulty in establishing friendships with local students, and initial challenges in integrating into the institution and adjusting to unfamiliar academic organisation and practices. The classroom emerged as often the only or the privileged space for intercultural interaction, and national and ethnic identities a strong markers of difference. It was apparent that technology was an important means of maintaining relationships with family and friends back home, as well as establishing new networks of international connections. On the whole, the experience was a valuable and enriching one, despite the challenges faced. The focus group was organised on the 27th of October via Zoom and was attended by 17 student participants. These represented a range of national and ethnic identities, with indigenous Quilombola students from Brazil, students from Angola, Mozambique, Guinea-Bissau, China and Iran. The focus group was held in Portuguese, with several native speaker and non-native speaker varieties being employed. In the next few slides, We'll present the main findings we gathered from this cross-institutional dialogue in terms of student perspectives on their intercultural experiences. Looking first at the benefits which they recognised, followed by the obstacles to interculturality they identified, and finally the ideas they expressed for the more effective conditions for interculturality to emerge in their institutions. Looking first at the benefits, Students were clear of the potential for personal growth and enrichment offered by the international or intercultural experience, the access to new worlds and worldviews, and a better understanding of their own cultural background and identity, which the intercultural encounter offered them. 
one student described their institution as a space of cultural discovery, explaining that today I see myself as a Guinean, as a Brazilian, as a Saint-Tumian, because I've lived a little part of these cultures, these varieties of the atmosphere they bring to this university. It's translated by us. Regarding the obstacles to interculturality, several common threads could be identified. It was clear from the students' testimonies that they felt teachers and institutions were unprepared for dealing with diverse populations. Though this was expressed most forcefully by the indigenous Quilombola students, it was also apparent in the opinions of international students in other institutions. Racism and discrimination were also voiced, although again, most forcefully among the indigenous Quilombola community, while other students expressed being subjected to national stereotypes and in general to a lack of curiosity and interest on the part of local or traditional student populations with regard to their interests, difficulties, life stories, beliefs, rituals and so on. Partly this lack of interest resulted in a lack of contact between perceived outsiders and insiders, but it was also related to an absence of, or difficulty in finding, spaces for intercultural encounter, dialogue and exchange. Students reported the overwhelming localness of staff in their institutions, leading to language barriers in some cases, bias in knowledge and attitudes, and Eurocentric inflexible curricula, which it was felt excluded other realities and other knowledges and proved demotivating and in some cases insurpassable. Further obstacles to interculturality included a lack of knowledge about the different people and other cultures who share the same spaces, linked to stereotyping and lack of curiosity, alongside the ease of association with cultural in-groups, preventing the crossing of cultural barriers necessary for interculturality to emerge. And finally, students noted that institutions were not really prepared to encourage interculturality by providing for physical spaces for encounter and dialogue and having strategies for making these occur. But the students also had concrete suggestions for measures they thought could contribute to more just and inclusive institutions. They expressed the need for everyone to know more about others who make up the institutional community and their cultures, and for the creation of welcoming spaces where students could meet and be heard about the challenges they face. These would need to be functional spaces where students not only meet amongst themselves, but with others who may be in a position to propose and implement solutions. Students feel silenced and confined in their own communities, so only when allowing their voices to be heard can institutional change take place. Regarding the disciplines and the organisation of curricula, students propose that syllabuses be analysed and reformed, making them less Eurocentric and more relevant to diverse learning styles and the differentiated knowledges that students bring with them. Both international students and those who followed irregular educational paths. Valuing each person's knowledge was deemed important rather than sticking to an inflexible set of knowledges out of touch with the realities of some students. Teacher preparation was also proposed. Preparation for dealing with diverse populations, adapting knowledge and approach and above all respecting difference and promoting inclusion in every classroom. It was suggested that disciplines be created which mix students from different backgrounds and nationalities as a way of integrating both people and knowledge, enhancing learning about others and mutual respect and curiosity and developing interculturality. The organisation of cycles of conversation and dialogue and more intercultural focus groups was recommended, capable of creating opportunities for dialogue between cultures, for active listening, for learning about diversity and raising awareness of the challenges faced by international, ethnically and socially diverse students. Apart from reforming and creating disciplines, students felt strongly that the institution could adapt its way of working to accommodate all students. This would include timetabling to respect students who have long and difficult journeys, 
every day just to get to class, ensuring that all students are included in working groups, not relying on digital skills and equipment which all students do not possess. In addition, when receiving international and non-traditional students, institutions should take care to make sure administrative procedures and practices are clearly and sensitively explained to students in a language with the, which they can understand in the case of international students. And finally, where discrimination effectively exists, this should be recognised and confronted as such, not disguised as an issue of cultural integration. Our final two slides aim to add flavour to our findings through the words, albeit translated, of some participants in our focus group. There's a lack of interest in knowing other cultures, says one student, because there's exchange between Angolans, Guineans, Mozambicans, but direct exchange with native Brazilians is lacking. This statement echoes an often repeated perspective, voiced in all three institutions and well recognised in academic literature on the subject, that interaction between local students and international students, incoming mobility students, non-traditional students, is hard to achieve. We need spaces like these, says another student, referring to the focus group itself, where we can exchange ideas about things we care about, challenges, challenges we face. We've just learnt something about each other. I've just learnt that the challenges faced by a Chinese colleague, an Angolan colleague, a Brazilian, indigenous, Quilombola colleague, are the same as mine. Exclusion and discrimination are expressed starkly in the words we are judged, discriminated. And the appeal to the institution to do something about the teachers so they can learn a bit about the indigenous Quilombola culture, about our realities, so that when we get here, the impact is not so great. For these students, teachers and teacher preparation are central to the capacity for them to fit in and to feel they belong. University students or young people out there ask me if I'm Korean or Japanese, says the Chinese student, feeling that if people got to know each other better, they wouldn't need to make this kind of identity assumption. The student also recognised their own tendency to not distinguish between different African identities. The answer in this case is to have more opportunities to get to know each other as individuals rather than representatives of larger or smaller cultural identity groups. And finally, an expression of enrichment and self-recognition, and we might say of interculturality. As this student explains, I learned some things and recognised some things about my culture. We start to recognise our culture when we can see another culture. We can see this other culture that is something similar to ours. Regarding our conclusions so far, this work is ongoing, but listening to students about their experiences of interculturality has led us to the following thoughts. Firstly, our institutions are increasingly diverse, transforming into interconnected global spaces where traditional, local, institutional and educational practices are disrupted and need reform. At the same time, institutions are called upon to receive students from disadvantaged communities who also feel that the institutional and educational practices are not adequate. So we can see that gaps exist between institutional goals, policies and discourses and the lived experiences of students. While intercultural goals and achievements are announced, the realities on the ground are often ignored or unknown. We believe that listening to students in relation to their experiences becomes a necessary step to bridging this gap and addressing the complexities of interculturality for the benefit of all. Lastly, our experience has shown that international exchange between researchers and teachers across different contexts, and particularly outside the sphere of Anglophone higher education, can enrich institutional practices and contribute to existing knowledge about the intercultural term in higher education. Thank you for listening.